hi beautiful people welcome back to my channel so with zini my name is Ezine and i make tutorials on anything concerning fashion diy and pattern drafting if you're a returning subscriber thank you so much god bless you and if this is your first time here please do well to watch to the end and do not forget to subscribe like and leave a comment down below what you see me wearing is a six pieces top and today i'll take you through the process of how i achieved it so now let us get right into the video so over here i've already drafted the pattern halfway and here is my zipper allowance i used two inches for my zipper and then this is my standard three inches neck measurement then this is my shoulder measurement which is eight inches i came down by one inch and then i slanted it down to my three inches that is my chest line my bust points my under bust my half length which is also my waist and then the blouse length or the top length then for the armhole curve i came in by half an inch i made a curve from the shoulder to the bust area so the following are the measurements i used for the six pieces top or blouse then moving ahead our nipple to nipple is four inches so we are going to be marking this four inches all through but on the bust point we'll go ahead and mark four and a half inches then coming down to the under bust we'll mark four inches and then we'll take this four inches down all the way to the blouse length we'll mark the four inches on the half length as well and then same as the blouse length then we'll go ahead and connect all these points together blouse length to the half length the half length to the under bust and the under bust to the bust point so these are the lines that we just connected together now the next thing is to measure the armhole curve so whatever i get as the measurement i'm going to be dividing it by two so i marked five because that was what i got after measuring it so i've already marked it out now the next will be to connect that to the nipple to nipple measurement that we marked on our boss point so i'll be using my pattern master to do the to connect the points together so from the under bust we'll be going in by two inches please note that if you're on the bigger side if you have a very big bust you can go in by 2.5 inches or if you have a very small bust you can go in by 1.5 inches so you're going to take your two inches down to your blouse length then after we are done with marking it out we'll connect all the lines together so from the bust point you'll be coming down by one inch this is just to make the bust area more relaxed and not so pointy from there you'll be making a curve down to your under bust with your pattern master so from your bust point you also go upwards by one inch this is also to create the same ease around the bust area so that it makes the bust area more relaxed and not so pointy and whatever that you removed from your under bust you're going to remove half inches from it and place it on your armhole curve you're going to share it in between the line on the armhole curve it means if your dart is 2.5 you're going to be placing two on, on your armhole and if your dart is two inches you're going to be placing 1.5 inches on your armhole so you're going to distribute it evenly so i'm going to put 0.75 upwards and i'll also mark my 0.75 downwards after the line just as you see me doing so from my armhole i'm going to mark my slanted line down to the one inch i took above my boss point area i'll mark it on the both sides from one of the armhole that just as you see me doing i'm going to go up by one and a half inches one and a half inches is the measurement of the dart that we removed on the armhole area so we are going to connect the line together and this is going to serve as our new armhole the reason for this extension is so that there won't be any shortages when you get to join your dress everything is going to align properly because if you do not do it this way there are going to be shortages and when you're sewing you find out that it's not matching up properly now that same 1.5 that measurement you're going to put it back on your chest line as your new bust measurement you mark it out and then from there with your pattern master you make a curve down to the bust measurement now this will now serve as your new armhole 
Now next is to start marking out our horizontal measurements. Our bust is 40 inches divided by 4 will give us 10 plus 1.5 inch that allowance that we put is going to be 11.5 so we've already marked that out. Now the next will be our waistline or our half length now our waistline is 34 inches dividing by 4 is going to be giving us 8.5 now we are going to add back the 2 inch dart that we removed from the waist we are going to add it back please do not forget to add yours back now the next is to connect the dots from the chest line to the waist line Moving forward, we'll determine our hip measurement on our blouse length line. So the hip we are using is 43. 43 divided by 4 is 10.75. We'll go ahead and mark this 10.75. After marking it, then we'll add our 2 inches that that we removed. Please, this is very important. Do not forget to add it back. When we are done with that, we'll make a slanted line connecting our half length to our blouse length that we are done with that we'll head over to the neck area so because of the type of neck i'm creating the neck width that i'm using is going to be 3.5 this is because it will have a collar and the neck depth we are using is three inches so with our curved ruler we'll make a curve and from our neck depth we'll be going in by two inches and we are going to be marking that then from that i'll mark six inches as the new neck depth then use my curve ruler to curve and connect it to the two inches i marked on the previous neck depth from our new neck depth we'll rule a horizontal line across our zipper allowance we'll shade out the previous line and then this will now become our new design for our neckline so here i'll proceed to shade out the unwanted areas that i'll be cutting out on my pattern after that we'll go ahead and label our pattern the center front and the side front this will help us identify it whenever we are cutting it on our fabric now we are done cutting it out also please do remember that you have to impute your seam allowance when you're cutting it on your fabric i'm going to impute mine whenever i'm cutting it so now we'll go ahead and relabel them so that we don't get confused when we start cutting it on our fabric we have the waist the under bust and our blouse length so now moving ahead to the back this is the basic pattern for the back bodies please ignore the the part that was taped now moving ahead our neck width for this is 3.5 inches which is the same as the front and our neck depth is two inches so we'll go ahead and use our curve driller to connect these two lines together that is the neck width and the neck depth next is to mark out our nipple to nipple measurement we'll be marking this all the way down and after that we'll also mark it on the bust point area and then rule a straight line from there down to the blouse length so from our blouse length we'll be going upwards by 1.5 inches you can go upwards by 2 inches this is totally dependent on you and then from our waistline we'll be going in by half inch on the both sides so after we are done marking it we'll go ahead and make a slanted line from the waistline down to the one and a half inches we went upwards on the blouse length so we'll go ahead and shade out the under bust line because this is totally not necessary for the back pattern from the waist we'll rule a slanted line connecting it to the bust point line so now half of the armhole curve is 4.5 we'll mark it and then we'll go up by one inch then we'll also mark that and then we'll connect it to our bust point line using our pattern master so we are going to be blending this area so that it doesn't have a sharp edge after that we'll be extending this by one inch then we'll now curve it out to our bust measurement now after we are done with that this will then become our new armhole so our bust measurement is 10 plus one inch that We'll mark that out and then we'll head over to our half length our half length is 34 divided by 4 which will be giving us 8.5 
we'll mark that out and then add our one inch dart that we already took out over to our hip we'll mark the quarter of our hip which is 10.75 now the next will be to connect all these dots together with our ruler also please do not forget to put your seam allowance i'll be using 1.5 but i'll be placing that on the fabric so i i go ahead to label it my waist my blouse length and i'll cut it afterwards So since I'm done cutting the pattern piece by piece, I'll have to place each piece on a plain pattern paper in order to cut out the flay. After I'm done doing that, I'll have to hold it with my cello tape in order to keep it in one place. So I'll be starting with one of my center front piece and for the flay, I'll be making use of five and a half inches. Please note that this is totally dependent on you you can make use of three inches you can make use of four inches but for the sake of this video and for the sake of the dress dress i made i'll be making use of five and a half inches i'll mark it out and then go ahead to slant it to the waist so i'll repeat the same procedure for the right side i'll go ahead and mark out my five and a half inches after i'm done marking it out i'll slant it to the waist so now from that slanted line i'll be going up by one and a half inches some people go up by one inch some people go up by two inches so this is just depending on what you want to achieve but for the sake of this video i'm going to be going up by one and a half inches when i'm done marking it i'll have to use my curve driller to curve it close to the center just as you see me doing so i'll repeat the same procedure for the left side i'll go up by one and a half inches and then with my curved ruler i'm going to curve it down to the center as well the next now is to just cut it out just as you see me doing now we are done cutting it out and this will become our new center front now the next is the side front and we'll repeat exactly the same procedure as we did with the center front So we are done with the front and this is the back and we are going to repeat exactly the same procedure as we did for the front. So as you can see, this is the center back and We've already folded it. The plain paper that I'll be using for this is already on fold. And if you can remember, I said for the back, we'll not be having any zipper. So we'll repeat the same procedure as the other pieces. The only difference is just that this particular center back is on fold. So the next thing we'll be doing now is to place the pattern on the fabric and cut it out. So that is what I'll show you next. So this is my center front piece. I've already cut two pieces of it on my Ankara and I also cut my lining. I also cut two pieces of my center front lining. And now this is the lace that I'll be placing on it as a design. It's going to be on my center front as well as my center back. So this is my side front piece. I cut two of these as well and I will not be adding any lace to it. I've also gone ahead to iron my interfacing on it. The interfacing I used is the very thick one. I'll go ahead to sew this and when I'm sewing it, I'll drag it up so that it gets to align properly. So this is the lining. I've already cut it out. I have two pieces of the center front and also two pieces of the side front now this is the back i've ironed my interfacing on it as well so i'll go ahead and place my lace remember i said the lace is going to be only at the center back and at the center front that is just the only sides that will have the lace 
So this is the side bag. I already went ahead to cut two pieces of this side bag and I've ironed my interfacing on it as well. So I'll go ahead and join it just like the way I'll be joining the front. When I'm done doing that, I'll bring it so that you guys can see what it looks like. So this is it. This is the back of the six pieces top and this is what it looks like. This is the inside. So on the waist area, I went ahead to notch it and I opened it up and pressed it down so that it makes it come out neater and it aids you whenever you're sewing it up together so this is what it looks like so you guys this is the lining for the bag i've gone ahead to join it up all together i've also opened up the seam allowances to iron it down when i'm done joining this together i'll bring it so that you can see so this is the front i've already joined it up together i also opened up the seam allowances to press it down just as you can see and this is the zipper side remember i said that our zipper is going to be in front so that is the zip allowance so we have our lining here and we have already joined it together so we'll go ahead and join the neck area for the lining but before we do that we'll be attaching the cup to the lining yes we are not going to be attaching the cup directly to the fabric we'll be attaching it on the lining and this is how i make my cup come out more puffy so as you can see i've already done one side so i'll be using the one that i've done to illustrate how you can do the other one so you have to start first by folding the cup inwards and from the top you go in by half an inch and run a slanted stitch down to the pointiest part of the cup now after you've done this you go ahead and trim out the excesses and this will now serve as your new cup and as you can see the difference is clear when you turn it out see that it now has a more pointed shape than when it was just bare so this is how we achieved this we'll go ahead and attach it to the lining after that the next thing we'll do is to join the two necks together that of the lining and the main fabric also i'm going to be attaching this shiny bias on the dress on all the darts and the style lines i'm going to be attaching it on the both sides i'll be doing this for both the back and for the front of the top okay so we've already gone ahead to join the cup as you can see also we have attached the neck we've joined the neck together and this is how it looks like we are going to turn it but before that i decided that i'll be using crinoline for the top this is just to give it a more wavy effect so yeah i've attached my crinoline so this is one side of my zipper and i'll go ahead and pin it down on my zipper allowance with my pins after i'm done pinning it down i'll go ahead i'll take it to the sewing machine and sew it all the way down and then we'll be left with the side so we are going to also close up the sides properly now leaving us only with the shoulder part open now this shoulder part is where we are going to be turning the dress from now this is the back and as you can see we have already attached our crinoline and the wavy effect is already coming out nicely so now we are done with this we'll go ahead and close up the sides together so now this is the front and this is how it looks like we've already joined the zipper we've also gone ahead to close the sides properly and as you can see even the inside is looking very neat we've joined everything and the only place that we've not joined is just the shoulder area but every other place has been joined and you can't even tell where it was sewn from so this is what we mean by inseam finishing everything has been closed up properly so now we'll go ahead and close the zipper so that you see what it looks like so this is it now we've closed the zipper and this is what it looks like now the only areas that are open are the areas i'll be adding the collar width and also the shoulder area which we will be closing with the back now we are going to we have also finished up our back and we are going to be attaching both of them together we we'll have to be joining the shoulders first now with the right sides facing each other i'll join the two shoulders together now i'll repeat the same procedure to both the lining and the other side of the top
so this is it i'm gonna have to sew the shoulders together and even when you turn the dress from the inside you notice that the lining has been finished up properly by the shoulder so everything has been finished up and you cannot see where it was sewn from so this is it and the next thing we'll be doing is to fix the band and before we do that we'll have to cut it out so now to know the measurements we'll have to measure around the neck and whatever i'll get from this that is what i'll use to cut out the band so now i've already cut the band and this is how i'm going to be attaching it to the neck area So here i'm done pinning it over and i'll take it to my sewing machine and sew it up now after that the next thing we'll be doing is to join in the sides together when we are jo done joining the sides together i'll bring it back and show you people what it looks like so we are done joining the sides together and this is what it looks like also the inside looks very neat you can't even tell where it was sewn from everything is just giving neatness and luxury vibes so this is how it looks like now we are done with the front the last thing remaining is just to fix our sleeves and here we have our sleeves we are going to be attaching a petal sleeve to this because this is the type of sleeve i want for this top so in another video i'll be showing you guys how i achieved this how i made the petal sleeve because this video is already getting too long so i can't join everything here so in my next video i'll be showing you guys how i cut and made this beautiful petal sleeve so i'll go ahead and attach these sleeves to this top and after attaching it i'll put it on i'll wear it so that you guys can see the end result and what it looks like on me and this is the final look this is how it looks this is the final outcome everything is just giving Even the flay has a very wavy effect anyways i really love the outcome of this dress and i hope you do so too so please if you've watched to this point and if you enjoyed this video with me please do not forget to like do not forget to subscribe do not forget to share and do not forget to leave a sweet comment down below and also do not forget to put on your notification bell so that you get notified whenever i post a new video okay thank you guys so much much if you're a returning subscriber god bless you and see you in my next video bye